We have yet another PS3 launch title to discuss today. This is Ridge Racer 7, the last mainline entry in the long-standing Ridge Racer franchise, and the first truly full 1080p console game to ever release. Now, I have only brief experience with the Ridge Racer franchise. I played the PSP one back in the day, but actually never tried any of the mainline games, at least as far back as I could remember. This racing series has admittedly perplexed me as I knew it was a game that was rather on rails where the goal was to sort of drift and skid your way across the tracks and the game sort of guides you uh, the entire way through it. So when I started up Ridge Racer 7 for the first time, I wasn't sure if this one was going to exactly win me over. I have a couple of points to make about this game, but first of all, let me be absolutely clear and just say that I like this game. I enjoyed my time with it, but there are some things about this one that just make it a bit hard for me to detail. Uh, so please forgive me if it sort of sounds like I'm tiptoeing my way around words for a bit. Ridge Racer 7 is classified as a high speed, intense racing game with an emphasis on drifting. And that's very important because you're expected to kind of slide yourself all the way to victory here. And upon playing it, I was sort of mesmerized by the style and presentation of it all. For one, when you start the game, you actually get to play very briefly a completely different game, a Xevious. Xevious is a top-down shooter from 1983, and I spent a good few minutes actually playing the game for a few rounds. And uh, once you feel you're sort of in the mood to actually play the game that you paid for, uh, you come to the game's main menu screen. Now you also get this really nice introduction before you get to the main game um, with some really gorgeous sort of mid 2000s CGI and then you're off to sort of choose an event and engage in the game's many arcade modes. Now style is the name of the game here. Everything just oozes with a sort of artistic touch and presentation and the music in the menu is just super cool. You have these lofty animations, the backgrounds and colors are clean and bright and then from there you sort of enter a race and you're off to compete so to speak. I have to say, speaking a bit on the cars, handling wise, it took me a very long time to get used to this. And you're going to have to sort of pardon the gameplay that I recorded here because there's like this rhythm to the driving that you just sort of have to feel. And when you step away from the game and come back to it after many months, uh, you kind of have to readjust yourself. Everything just feels so on rails, like the cars are moving along the track with minimal engagement from you as a player. And you're just sort of guiding the car, making sure it's pointing in the right direction for where you want to go. When you hit a rail, for instance, you just sort of bounce off of it and it reduces your speed. And basically that's the penalty of, of hitting things. And it took me a bit of time to understand and get used to this entire movement system. I had to really rethink the way that I approached this compared to other racing games. And when it finally clicked, it was sort of calming and almost like you know, it puts yourself in a weird trance where you're just sort of hyper focused and your body's reacting and you know the timing of the turns and you pass your competitors. It provides a bit of a, a little bit of satisfaction and it's certainly weird, it's certainly unique. And I think that it's quite a testament that while we've seen other racing franchises try to mimic each other over the years, I can't quite recall any other racing game trying to duplicate Ridge Racer's gameplay, at least initially. Now, as I said previously, this game's visuals are beautiful, but also uh, somewhat famous. At the time, Sony was touting the PS3 hardware as the very best thing that anyone's ever conceived. And while the third party gameplay experiences left a lot to be desired at the time, having a game, a launch title, in 2006 running at native 1080p and not just full hd but you couple that with 60 frames per second as a target it's a technical marvel the picture quality is so crisp in this game it's one of the cleanest titles i've seen from this era and while the geometry and the detail of the environments is rather simplistic uh, having such a high resolution to work with the edges and art style in this game truly make up for it all. Now the frame rate is mostly stable. It does fluctuate, but I've seen racing games from this era run much, much worse at lower resolutions than this. So despite even these hiccups, I think the game is still beautiful and holds up well today. 
And while I don't necessarily think that this game was moving any hardware sales, you have to admit that it did help Sony that they had a game at launch that truly landed on the vision of what they were trying to market with the PS3, of delivering this high definition gaming experience at a period where most people were still rocking CRT television sets. And of course, while we're here, let's take a look at the box art for Ridge Racer 7 on the PlayStation 3. I like the cover art for this one. It goes really well with the sort of translucent cases. You got the classic PS3 logo there. There's a good look at the spine. And then on the back, you're going to see we have a couple of different screenshots and the whole, you know, uh, tagline of the game, Drive Sideways, a couple different information about the rating system and then the video outputs. You can see the supported HD output as 1080p there. So uh, pretty freaking cool. Now, if we open this up, I got a full complete, you know, uh, game here in the box. We have the game disc, which is uh, kind of similar to the front, features some different artwork, but looks pretty cool. And we got a nice uh, condition disc as well. And then we got a manual with this game, and the manual is actually full color, which is nice. Um, it's a decent amount, you know, of pages here. It gives you basically all the information you're looking at in terms of, you know, the setup of the game, the, the game screen, the different cars and classes, arcade modes. Uh, there's some multiplayer information, um, you know, recording your gameplay sessions and stuff like that. You could save your, your race times and kind of share them later. All that was really a big part of the game. And of course, the uh, online competition stuff, which uh, I didn't try out. I doubt this game's servers are still up, but, you know, that was an element uh, along with this game. So anyway, yeah, uh, you have some cool information there, and it basically just has everything that you want to know about the game. And uh, yeah, it's basically all complete. So you have a good look at the box art there for Ridge Racer 7, like the cover up for this one, especially with the classic PS3 case. And let's talk about the music, because the soundtrack, <laughs> it's just fucking cool, man. This is some of the best music I've heard, not just in a racing game, but from games of this era as well. And it just adds to the whole vibe you feel when you play this game. You get this really nice electronic soundtrack, uh, but they're tracks that feel calming and soothing to listen to. It's not stuff that's going to give you a headache or put you to sleep. There's like this beautiful balance that is achieved here with the music selection in this game. And when you get the right song playing and you're just sort of engaging with the game, it just sucks you in, man. There's quite a lot of music here, and perhaps the only criticism I could levy from it is that just about all of the music is electronica, but even if it's not your style, the track selection here is super well done and just fits the game beautifully. Now, as far as the rest of the audio goes, cars sound okay here and just to be completely honest none of the cars here sound you know particularly impressive they all kind of sound like toys or kind of similar to burnout um, but i would even say less of an emphasis on sort of the rumble and the roar of the engines here we get some nice creative vehicles here that sort of just take this arcadey formula and sort of hypercar inspiration but this is honestly the type of game where you're going to go into the options just turn down the environmental sounds the car sounds and just in increase the music volume and the audio didn't especially leave me you know impressed but i'd have to say that it's probably the weakest element of the game it's just overall lacking in presence and umph and i think that it's such a testament that the music is so well done and just vibes with the entire game like it's just this you know complete symmetry of an experience when those things come together that you're not going to particularly care about you know the fact that the cars don't sound impressive or there's not a lot of atmospheric effects and things like that i think the best description i could offer for ridge racer 7 is that it's a game that's less about the racing like less about the intensity or, or the speed, and it's more about the vibe and inertia of listening to some trance-like tunes and then drifting these fake automobiles in like the most unrealistic way possible and just sort of feeling the moment. Like when the music kicks in and you understand the controls, you just sort of get into a rhythm with this gameplay. And although it's heavily on rails, it's oddly almost therapeutic at times. Like I could honestly imagine someone who's in the midst of feeling, you know, intensely emotional at one point. If they picked up this game and they knew what they were doing and knew how to play it, 
all of that would just wash away in a moment's notice. Like it's a game you honestly just sort of feel and the more you spend time with it, the more it starts to make sense. In any case, as I mentioned before, I don't have much experience with this franchise, but please let me know if any of you guys do. In fact, I'd be curious to know if anyone here loves this series and can it all relate to the sort of vibing like feeling you get when you play this game. Is that why you love it? Thanks everybody for watching this video. I hope you enjoy your day and I'll see you all for the next one.